हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज़ फरवा बतूल एंड वेलकम टू द कोर्स ऑफ ओ लेवल कंप्यूटर साइंस सो वी वर लुकिंग द मैथड्स ऑफ एर डिटेक्शन एंड करेक्शन एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन अदर मैथड दैट इज चेक सम्स राइट चेक सम्स इज बेसिकली एन एर detection and correction method that is used in data transmission right when you are transferring the data from one device to another right how we basically do that let's suppose we are transferring the data in the form of blocks right we are transferring data blocks from one pc to another or from one device to another right we have data blocks then what we are going to do we are going to calculate the checksum by using the these data blocks or the data inside it right so very first thing is you are going to calculate the checksum from the data or from the bytes right uh that are basically transferring the data is basically transferred in the form of bytes right so you are going to calculate the checksum by using uh or from the data basically it is calculated calculated from the data right the very first thing that is important the data blocks or the data inside it um will help us to calculate the checksum right so the second thing is that the checksum is then transferred um or transmitted with these data blocks when you calculate the checksum then you are going to transmit it uh, along with the data right it uh, it needs to be transmitted transmitted with the data right and when it is transmitted to the receiver and then the receiver is going to calculate it again right so the checksum is then recalculated from the block of data that has been received at the receiver's end right so it is recalculated calculated at the receiver's end and by using the block of data right data and keep in mind that the algorithm that is used to calculate the checksum needs to be same at the sender's end at the receiver's end we need to um, we need to use the same method of calculating checksum right that is important so that the results can be similar right so it is then recalculated once the data is transmitted before the transference the sender is going to calculate the checksum and then it is um, just transmitting that particular value of checksum along with the data to the receiver send this receiver send is going to calculate the checksum by itself by using the data block right and finally it is going to compare both the checksums the one that is calculated by itself and the other that has came with the data block from the from the sender right so comparing compares both the checksums right the receiver is going to compare both the checksums so i hope this process uh, is clear the method of checksum is uh, basically this this process what is that you you are going to calculate the checksum at the sender's end by using the block of data that needs to be transmitted right and that particular checksum is then integrated with the data or is uh, transmitted along with the data to the receiver's end and the receiver is going to recalculate the checksum when it receives the data blocks right and along with the data blocks we have the checksum of the sender right that is uh, just transmitted 
by the sender and once the receiver uh, calculates the checksum right once it recalculates the checksum by using the data blocks it is going to compare both of the checksums right and if both of the checksums are same the one that the receiver calculated and the one that is uh, basically sent by the sender right so if the values of both the checksums are equal right equal values then it means the data that is transmitted or the data blocks are having the same data there is no um there is no distortion or there is not uh, not any corruption in the data right the data is uh, very much is uh, just transmitted correctly right and if we are not having the same values for the checksum right after calculation then it means that unequal values means that the data is not transmitted correctly we have incorrect data that is transmitted incorrect right in the data blocks we have uh, the data has been corrupted okay so the seventh thing is that if the data is not uh, e, uh, is not correct or it has been corrupted then the receiver is going to is going to request for retransmission of data right so if the data that has been sent is not received in its actual form then the receiver is going to ask the sender or request the sender to please retransmit the data right so in this is the whole process of checksum and now we are going to see that how this particular checksum this value is going to be calculated by using the block of data right so let's see that okay so let's suppose my checksum is of one byte right let's suppose the checksum that i am calculating is of one byte that is equals to eight bits right so what can be the values that uh, the maximum value that can be stored in the one byte is basically uh, it's a range from 0 to 255 right and how we have calculated this range we are going to use a formula over here like 2 raised to the power n minus 1 where n is the number of bits right and for one byte it is 8 2 raised to the power 8 minus 1 that is giving us 255 right so what is the range of the numbers that can be stored uh, in one byte that is from 0 to 255 and total numbers we have 256 right we have 256 total numbers and the range is 0 to 255 that can be stored in this one byte right the checksum value can be from 0 to 255 right so if my data is bigger than uh, this value 255 basically what happens let's suppose i have data blocks and there is some data inside it right I have different bytes in my data this is my data that needs to be transmitted and it has lots of data blocks inside it or lots of bytes inside it then what I am going to do I am basically uh, calculating the sum the very first thing is calculate the sum of sum of bytes in the data block the bytes that are in the data block i am going to take the sum of all the bytes right now after taking the sum of all the bytes inside the data block if my sum is if the sum is less than 256 right so it can be the sum can be from 0 to 255 right it can be anything so if the sum of the bytes that are stored in this data block that needs to be transmitted is less than 256 so the checksum would be that particular sum we can simply uh, 
say that if the sum is less than 256 then the sum can be equals to checksum right my checksum value would be that particular sum if it is less than 256 but if my sum is not less than 256 or it is greater than 256 right the other case is that if the sum is greater than 256 or equal to 256 then what we are going to do then we are going to use an algorithm to calculate the checksum value right because we cannot store 256 257 258 in one byte right we cannot store this much value or greater than this value in this in one byte because one byte can store only the values from 0 to 255 right so if the sum is greater than 256 then we are going to use an algorithm in order to find out the value of checksum right so that it can be in the range of 0 to 255 to be stored in one byte right okay so let me share this particular particular algorithm with you uh, right so that we can calculate the value of checksum if my sum of the bytes in the data block is greater than 256 right so let's see that okay so here we go let's suppose i have a data block and the sum of data sum of the bytes inside the data block is equals to 1185 let's suppose this is the sum right that is x equals to 1185 then this is greater than 255 right so i cannot store this value in one byte right because it is very much it is very greater than 255 and I can only store a value ranging from 0 to 255 in one byte. So in order to make my checksum within this range, I need to calculate it using an algorithm, right? So what is my first, first step for it? In the first step, I am going to divide sum by 256 right right what you are going to do you are going to divide the sum by 256 that is 1185 divided by 256 what is it it is basically uh let's suppose it is 4.6 you can calculate it later on right i am just writing it down uh, uh just quickly doing it 4.629 let's suppose this is the calculated value Okay, now the second thing, in the second step, what you need to do, you are going to ignore the decimal value, right? So by ignoring the decimal value, ignore decimal part, you can have it as four, right? Now, what I'm going to do in the third step, just multiply this value with 256. Right, so I am going to multiply 256 with this value that has been um, came from dividing the sum with the 256 and then ignoring the decimal part. I have got this value and now I am multiplying 256 with this value. Okay, so what I am going to get 256 into 4 that is 1024 right now 1024 is still bigger than 255 right i need to have a checksum value within this range right because i have only one byte to store the checksum so in the fourth step i am going to subtract 1185 that is the sum i am going to subtract the sum with the value that has been received in step number three that is 1024 so now what I get, I get a number that is 161. So this 161 is going to be my checksum, right? This is my checksum because it has, now it has uh, just came up within this particular range, right? Now 161 can easily be stored in one byte. So this is how we are going to use this particular algorithm. For the case, if my sum of bytes that are in my data block, if the sum is greater than 256, 
then or equals to 256 then i am going to use this particular algorithm to calculate my checksum value other than that if my sum is below 256 then i can simply make that particular sum my checksum value right so thank you so much for watching this video and i hope this video is clear to you uh, you came to know that how we can calculate the checksum value and after calculating it at the sender's end you are going to transmit the checksum along with the data to the receiver's end right and then the receiver is going to calculate the checksum itself using the same algorithm as the sender did right and then the receiver is going to compare both the checksums as I have already just mentioned all the process, right? So after comparing, it is going to detect the error. If the checksum is unequal, the uh, data is corrupted. It is not in its original form. So it will just request for retransmission of data, right? So this is how we are going to do the calculation of checksum we are going to calculate the checksum at the sender's end at the receiver's end right and this is how we are going to detect the error in data transmission right thank you so much for watching this video i hope this video is clear to you if you have any questions you can comment below uh, i am going to answer it definitely uh, so thank you so much for watching it please share my videos with other students as well so that we can all help each other right Thank you so much. Take care. In the next video, we are going to see ARQ, that is automatic repeat request. Another method for error detection and correction, right? Bye-bye. Take care. See you in the next video.